Hi, and welcome to the Schunk live stream here from the Hannover Messe 2021. Um, we are standing here live from the CoLab in Schunk, Germany, Brackenheimhausen. And uh, I'm really happy to tell you today a little bit more about new opportunities for robotic material removal. So, my name is Daniel Mayer. I'm the responsible product manager for the robotic material removal products. And I'm happy today to let you know more and introduce you into our new portfolio that we have been working on intensively in the past 12 months. So before I start, I want to give you a short overview about what you can expect from my presentation today. First, I'd like to let you know more about why the importance of the topic of robotic material removal is gaining more and more attention. Then I will let you know about new chances and opportunities that are opening up right now at the moment outside there in the industry. Then I will give you a short introduction into our portfolio so you can get an overview of what we offer for you. Afterwards, we'll switch to a live demo as you can see with the robot behind. So you can really learn and see how the products work and how you can boost your efficiency within your production. In the end, I will also let you know more about the new collab here at Chunk where we are streaming from. And in the end, I will give you a, sh a short wrap up and summary. So why should you start with the automation of material removal tasks? What is the importance there? Of course, as always, there are interests and there are challenges out there. But so far in the past, the challenges outweighed the interests. The interests, on the one hand, um, are yeah, quite interesting in terms of uh, it's quite hard to find employees, especially within the material removal field. So talking about the bearing tasks, for example, or grinding tasks which is a quite heavy and dangerous task. So it's hard to find employees doing this job. You also have the topic of safety um, because you also want to make sure that your customers are able to work for you on a longer scale. So in terms of ergonomic uh, issues, you should also consider automate these difficult tasks and also make sure that no more accidents can happen. Of course, we have the topic of product quality, which is all around us. And we all know that the customers are expecting always more and better quality. So therefore, the automation of these tasks can also help you to achieve better results and quality in products. Because especially thinking about manual processes and tasks, this means that usually you have a variation in it. So with robots, which are repetitive, um, it's quite good to uh, earn consistent results. And of course, in the end, it all comes down to money, time and resources. So we all try to keep our costs down and cut the cost even further um, because the resources are limited. But as said before, the challenges here in the past have outweighed these interests. So thinking about these manual tasks like sanding or deburring with a manual deburring blade, um, these processes, there is not too much detailed knowledge about them there because, of course, I can guesstimate about the force I apply and about the angle I'm applying the tool, but I'm not aware of it in every detail and aspect of it. And that's why we also had a high risk of integration of these tasks for integration and automation. Another factor blocking these parts was uh, the small batch production or is the small batch production which is also getting more and more popular together with customized products, uh, which we all um, are experiencing at the moment, the trend to customization. But also in thinking about part-to-part -part variation, which makes it quite hard. For example, plastic molded parts usually have a flash or burr, and these, and these are varying from part to part, which is not easy to deal with in an automation. And last but not least, it's also 
a matter of sensing. So the robot itself is usually not able to see and feel. Um, this needs external sensors. And as said, uh, this game is changing already because just thinking of, of sensors and in the, the sense of feeling and touch, that's something robots are gaining, getting more and more popular and gaining right now. So we have technological advancement, which help us here. So the seesaw turns, so the interests are weighing more than the challenges that we see. Since we have some uh, more technological advancement supporting this movement. One thing, of course, is the simple robot programming, which um, is popular right now, together with the trend to cobots. But also we see that the industrial robots get easier to program every day. We also have many standard options available for vision and for stalk sensing. So a lot of systems out there which can be standardly integrated into the robots. So this is also something supporting these. Of course, we also have the component side, the robots which are uh, the products which are optimized for robot usage that we as shown, for example, offer you. So these are especially designed for 24 seven uh, usage as the manual tools, for example, are aren't. Um, and also those are able to somehow overcome the issues with the part-to-part -part variation. And of course, we have also a lot of software solutions out there to support this. No matter if we're talking about um, easier programming in terms of offline programming software suits or um, CAD to path programming, um, so software solutions, or if you are process monitoring. So a lot of support out there and available as a standard in the market, no matter if it's conventional or based on artificial intelligence or machine learning approaches. So as you can see, the obstacles in the way of robotic material removal are getting removed. Of course, not all challenges are solved, but at least they're getting less and you're able to start. And that's why you should also consider to start the automation of your processes. And here I come to the new opportunities and applications that are out there that you should and can start to consider automate. One big field of the three is the burying. So here talking mostly about post-processing of parts which are machined or cast it or mold it, for example, um, like breaking edges, removing burrs or flashes, uh, which is usually done manually or also automatically partly by highly, highly and very precise machining centers, for example. So there are already solutions out there, but those tasks usually they need to be done because they're not really value adding. So therefore, um, this is a really broad field no matter if we're talking about wooden, plastic, uh, reinforced plastics, metal work pieces, no matter if aluminum or steel, um, we're able to find a lot of these applications and processes out there. So a large new field opening up. Also, another uh, interesting area is the polishing area. We all know um, the finishing of products, so the appearance is nice, like a, a shiny surface or smooth uh, gets also more and more important, no matter if you're talking about the B2B or B2C industries. So uh, depending on if you have some optical properties that you need, for example, in automotive or in other industries, some um, general product out there, or if you need some functional properties like in aerospace, that's worth to have a look into it if it's possible to automate. And the last very promising and interesting field I'd like to uh, talk about is grinding and sanding. Sanding takes place in many different applications, no matter if you are preparing a surface for the final paint, for example, or if you want to get a nice finish of a wooden surface. And on the other hand, the grinding part, we're talking about welding, for example, which is a very interesting field because there are a lot of welding robot solutions already out there. So the robots are doing the welding already. So the next step will and could be that they start also with the grinding afterwards, which is so far often done by hand manually, 
which is a very heavy, dangerous, and dull task. So, what did we do so far to give you a possibility to participate in these new applications? Here's a short overview on our portfolio, what we have available for you. So we divided it also into the bearing, polishing, and grinding and sanding part, because here we have different tools uh, that you can deploy. Talking about the bearing, we have tools with no drive, like our compliant de bearing blade, you will see later on. We have also pneumatic tools, usually pneumatic spindles for the bearing, rotor with rotary tools, and also an electric de bearing tool, an electric spindle. We've divided them also into actual and radial compensation because depending on the application, you may make use of the one or the other. For polishing, we also have uh, different options available, um, mainly distinguished by the rotations per minute, but also by the compensation. And also for grinding and sanding, we already have two products out there and I can tell you um, to, it would be good to stay tuned on what's going on until end of this year because electrification takes place. As you here can see, we have a large variety of tools with a lot of different sizes, no matter which rotations per minute or power that you need. We have a solution for almost any of your applications so far, and there's still more to come. But before I jump into the products, I would say, let's start with the live demo. So you can see really how those units work. So let's start with the automation of manual processes. That's the first thing I want to talk about. As you can see, the robot now picks up the first tool, the compliant de bearing blade. Our first tool, um, which is used for the bearing of plastics. Here, for example, the plastic cover of a suitcase. It uses the manual blades from the manual process, from the manual tool holder, so it's easy to use. And it has a pneumatic compliant, compliance uh, integrated, as you can see here. And it's also adjustable. So we can make sure that if there is a variation in parts, it's not a big deal, the robot can handle it. If we are talking about automated tasks, of course, what is important? You need to change your tool, no matter if you need a new sharp tool or if you need another tool, just thinking of two different tasks that you want to do. So here you can see that there is also an automatic tool change available. The next manual process, which can be automized, uh, you can see here, um, which is the polishing of a painted surface. The robot now picks up with our standard tool changer, the SWS, our AOV, the actual, orbital main type motor sander. So here we have a polishing pad included and as you can see it's perfectly suited for polishing application to prepare or get a nice finish of the surface. And the unit has an actual compliance as mentioned before which is using a double uh, actuated piston so you can retract and extend uh, separately. So you can make sure you have a constant force no matter of the orientation of the tool. And same for the CDB, we also have here an automated uh, pad changing system available. So you're able to change the pads. So the second process here is about how to get more out of your machine tanning application. The robot starts by picking up a double gripping unit with our PGN plus P, our flagship gripper, um, and showing you a simulated machine tanning application. It picks up the raw part, gets out the finished part of the machine, it puts down the raw material, and right now you can see the robot has the workpiece already in its hands. So the robot can help to relieve the machining sander because for the bearing, it's not needed to have the precision that the machining sander allows you. So here we start with the bearing or breaking the edges uh, with our new RCV, a radial compliant vein type motor tool, which also accomplishes um, radial compensation, uh, which is act which is pneumatically adjustable, as you can see here. The next step shows you 
on how to deburr the holes. So here we have also the compliant, de compliant deburring blade, the CDB, which is using a countersink here, which is very nicely used here because you can see there's no drive, but we use the robot instead to get rid of the burrs. And this unit is perfectly suitable um, for this task, as you can see, because it's axial and radial compliant. So the last step here is our brand new CRT, the Compliant Reciprocating Tool, um, which is a filing tool. So if you can see here these narrow and tight spaces where you cannot really fit in with a rotary tool or you end up uh, with not getting into the corners with this, the filing tool offers you a new possibility. And as all the product, it has also a radial compensation built in, as the robot will show you right now. And all of them can be also locked, so you just have a single access lockout. So, what's the efficiency boost here? Um, I want to show you on the next slide. So, how, can, how does this boost your efficiency? Um, helps you in terms of having a look at the classical machine tanning application on top of the slide. You have a machining center. In the beginning, it has to wait. Then you have a lot of machining time, the green bar. And in the end, usually you do the bearing of the workpiece. And then the robot starts with loading and unloading the next part. And then you start with the next workpiece. If you are now able to take out the deburring tasks out of the machining center, this will help you in two ways. So as you can see, the time on the machining center gets shorter. Uh, that's the first. So you can reduce the cycle time depending on the workpiece of up to 25%. And on the other hand, it also helps you to deploy and utilize the robot even more because the idle and waiting time of it gets also reduced. So you have two nice effects. You can eliminate the idle time of the robot and you can utilize your machining center even more for a higher pro productivity per hour. And you can also focus on the value adding precision tasks and do not need to use the highly uh, precise and costly machining center for it. And this will help you to save time, to save money and energy, not only from a financial point of view, but it also helps in general to be more sustainable. So coming to the end, I'd like to also say a few words about the collab here at Schunk in Brackenheim Halven. We have here more than 800 square meters available to validate your automation processes for, with our more than 11,000 standard components, not only talking about material removal. Therefore, we have 11 industrial robots and cobots available at the moment, so we can make sure we can support you no matter which brand you're using and we also have six application engineers dedicated especially for your application and process. No matter if you just need a short and fast feasibility answer, if something is possible or not, if you need a real process validation with uh, documentation with it, or if you really need a process analysis and you need to figure out how to find, get a solution. We have everything exactly ready for your application. And of course, as you can see here, we also have a dedicated robot cell for material removal products. The cell is fully equipped with all the products that you saw before. So we are able to um, do also testings together with your workpiece. So I tell you, all we need is your workpiece. You bring it, you bring the workpiece and we offer you a solution. How does this help you? It helps you in many ways. So one thing is you can minimize your risk. If you have an inquiry from a customer or if you have within your own production a need for automation of one of those tasks, we can really help you to evaluate early if this is possible and how it is possible. And on the second step, this will also help you uh, to reduce the efforts of starting up the process afterwards because you get all the documentation from us um, that you need. No matter if you need all the process parameters, talking about the robot, talking about the tools and the paths that the robot was moving. So we have it all available for you 
together with videos and photos, whatever you need, tailored to your needs. And of course, uh, we also have the ability to demonstrate on what we did right now on site here together with you and your customer or depending on a pandemic situation. Otherwise, we also like it to help you online and show it online. So now all that's left to say is that it's your turn. Get in touch with us. Stop by at our booth. We are always happy to help you and uh, discuss with you about your upcoming applications and challenges and projects that you may see or receive. Um, we are happy to learn more and hear from you, no matter if you have stopped by at our booth or if you're talking to our product sales team or if you just want to stroll around on our website. So from my side, I'd like to thank a lot for your attention that you took the time to join the stream today and I'm happy to hear from you in the future. Thanks a lot. Have a great day and enjoy the Hannover Messe. Goodbye.